Hello everyone. Today we are going to discuss a topic called mechanical properties of solids. Okay, moving on to that, let us consider what are the states of matter. What are the states of matter? Okay, look at this figure. We can see that there are three states of matter. One is solid, which has a definite shape then the definite mass and occupy a volume second liquid liquid has shape of the container and it has no definite shape but has the definite shape of the container also gas also does not have any specific shape mass etc okay that is we can categorize states of matter into let me conclude it as solids and fluids we already know that it, uh, solids has a definite definite mass shape size volume etc okay also what is meant by fluid? Fluid are our liquid and gas. Liquid and gas comes under the fluids and it also it also doesn't have no definite no definite mass like no definite size or shape and what is a fluid? Fluid is something which can flow. It is called a fluid. Okay. Thus, we can say that there are two states of matter. That is, one is solid and other are fluids. Solid consists of definite masses, shape, size and volume. Also, we call it as a rigid body also we call it as a rigid body and in case of fluid it doesn't have any de definite shape or size but it contain uh, but it has a shape of but it has a shape of containing vessels containing vessel also it can be defined as which can flow that is liquid and gases comes under the category fluids okay then to, uh, our topic is about the mechanical properties of solids okay so we already know that what is a solid okay now i am going to classify solids into two categorize solids into two Look at this picture. Look at this first picture. We can see that the atoms, each atom is arranged in a regular order. So, this type of arrangement is called a crystalline solid. What is that? It is a crystalline solid. And secondly, look at this picture. Look at the second picture. In these, these atoms are irregularly arranged. That is, it is called amorphous solids. It is called amorphous solid. That is, we can categorize solids into two, crystalline solids and amorphous solids. There are certain features for crystalline solids. These are ordered atoms. These are ordered atoms. Atoms are in ordered state and it is a regular repetition. You can see a regular repetition of atoms. Okay, this and this. Okay. That is regular repetition of atoms. Okay. They are identical. They have 
identical building blocks they have identical building blocks okay for example the case of consider the case of nacl and in nacl the atoms or the building block are arranged in a shape of simple cube that is we can say that nacl structure is in simple cubic manner that is is the building block is simple cubic in nature okay moving on to the amorphous solids it is in disordered in disordered atoms or, or in disordered manner we can say that this is there is no uh, in a repeating pattern okay then there is no regular there is no regular repetition there is no regular repetition and no identical building blocks no identical building blocks okay these are the features of crystalline and amorphous solid example of amorphous solid is glass wood silica etc are amorphous solids okay then moving on to the properties of solids we are going to study the main the most effective property called elastic properties elastic properties of solids before going uh, going to the details what is mean by elasticity what is mean by elasticity so consider a solid is attached to a wall okay to a rigid support this is solid consider i am giving a weight or a mass i am hanging a mass m so after some time it can be seen that the length of the solid becomes elongated because of this mass that is initially the uh, the material has length l original length l then after hanging the mass m it will extend to delta l okay we can say that uh, a, for, uh, for this elongation we can say that there is a force acting on this body that is called mg m is the mass and where m is the mass and g is the acceleration j is the acceleration due to gravity okay that is it is a force that is the force acting on the body is mg this force that deforms it deform that is it deforms the shape of the material called this called so it is called deforming force this called is this force is called deforming force okay now we are going to define what is elasticity okay if we remove the deforming force if the material regains its original shape then it is called a elastic body that is what is mean by elastic body this the elastic body is if a solid if a solid regains regains its original its original shape when the deforming force when the deforming force deforming force removes it is called elasticity that property that 
property is called elasticity that property is called elasticity these are the main features of the elastic bodies for example our metals our metals like aluminum gold silver uh, then copper etc are elastic bodies then we have to define another property called plasticity then what is plasticity plasticity is the property by which if a solid if a solid doesn't regains its original shape its original shape even after even after the removal of even after the removal of deforming force that body is called plasticity plastic bodies that body is called plastic bodies uh, for example glass plastic rubber etc are plastic bodies or they exhibit the property called plasticity okay now we are going to express the elastic properties into physical quantities that is we are going to define what is stress now in the previous example we had or we clamped a rigid body or material of length l and it is hanged with a mass m we can say that this force the acting force is called deforming force okay the then we can say that the force that force is called stress the stress is the can be defined as sigma is equal to the force per unit area the force per area is called stress the deforming force applying or acting on the body in a particular area is called stress that that is the unit of stress is the newton per meter square then another quantity called strain that is when the body is having the original length l then after applying an external force its length become delta l that is if the the body is strained or it changes its shape that is we can express it as strain that is what is mean by strain strain can be denoted by the letter epsilon they can be given as change in dimension that is change in dimension to original change in dimension to the original dimension okay for the case of length for the case of length it is change in length can be denoted as delta l and original length it is l for the case of area it is the change in area by original area for it is volume is changing then we can say that change in volume by original volume okay these are the two main physical quantities we consider in studying the uh, elastic properties of the solids the unit of strain is no unit because the changing length here consider this that is meter by meter it is no unit then 
we have to relate these two physical quantities by a law called hooke's law hooke's law states that stress and strain are mutually dependent within the elastic limit that is stress is directly proportional to strain that is stress is directly proportional to strain that is if we add uh, consider if we add a one block of mass its length will be delta l if we add two block of masses it again increases delta l that is stress is directly proportional to strain that is stress by strain is a constant stress by strain is a constant this constant is called that is is constant is called the modulus of this modulus of elasticity is called the modulus of elasticity or coefficient of or coefficient of elasticity elastic elasticity of the material we already say that there are three types of strains for that there are three types of modulus of elasticity that is one is young's modulus of elasticity that is young's modulus young's modulus is the ratio of stress to the longitudinal strain that is young's modulus can be defined as y is equal to stress divided by longitudinal longitudinal strain that is in the above case if l is the original length then delta l is the changing longitudinal strain then we can say that the stress is equal to f by a and longitudinal strain can be represented as delta l by l that is f by a delta l f by a delta l into l this is the young's modulus according to hooke's law the stress applied on the wire is directly proportional to the elongation produced so this also called strength tensile stress this also called tensile stress that is tensile stress divided by longitudinal strain is called the young's modulus it is comes at the young's the name is the name in comes under the scientist called thomas young who discovered this properties of material since strain has no dimension young's modulus has the same dimension as the stress that is unit of unit of young's modulus is this is that is force by area that is force by area is called newton per meter square that is this is also called or is called pascal okay if the young's modulus is large it that is it is y is directly proportional to force and length force and y is directly proportional to length that is larger the y larger the y more force is required more force is required to elongate the material okay this is the young's modulus moving on to the next that is 
bulk modulus now the second modulus is called the bulk modulus okay consider a solid having the original volume v and on applying a force i am applying a force after applying the force the volume will be decreased the volume will be v minus delta v so we can thus define bulk modulus v volume stress that is volume stress divided by volume strain volume stress by volume strain that is that is force per unit area divided by delta v v by p force per unit area is called pressure is called pressure that is since it is decreasing the volume we have to give a negative sign that is delta p negative delta p into delta v okay then bulk modulus of elasticity is the ratio of volume stress to volume strain then in this we have to express another quantity called compressibility It is called compressibility the reciprocal of the reciprocal of bulk modulus is the compressibility it is denoted by the letter capital k that is k is equal to 1 by b is the compressibility compressibility is denoted by the letter k bulk modulus is denoted by the letter b okay then moving on to the next modulus that is shear modulus shear modulus consider a solid who has a fixed base the base is fixed and let me apply a force that force let me apply a force on this side and this it is having an area a okay it's called an area a and on applying that the this this side this face will be shifted by an angle theta an angle theta there why here also we can say that it is shifted by theta because its face uh, base is fixed the base is fixed okay then we can say that shear modulus or it is called rigidity modulus okay shear modulus or rigidity modulus can be represented as g is equal to shear stress by shear stress divided by shear strain that is here the applied force is f and on applied area a that is f by a and the strain is produced is the theta the theta is the shear strain and this gives the value of shear modulus or rigidity modulus okay let us recap what we have learned today we are dealing with the mechanical properties of solids the solids uh, is a state of matter the state of matter can be divided into two that is solids and fluids and it has definite mass shape and volume and it is also called a rigid body 
and we can uh, also divide solids into two that is crystalline solids and amorphous solids then uh, because of the this because of the above properties we can say that is elastic properties of solid is of important in our studies that is due to the arrangement of atoms that is you know what is mean by elasticity elasticity is the property by virtue of a solid that is it can regain its original shape when the deforming force removes this property is called elasticity for example uh, the all metals that is solid metals it's aluminum gold copper etc are elastic bodies also what is plasticity the opposite of elasticity is the plasticity it is if a body doesn't regain its original shape even after removal of the deforming force it is called plastic bodies okay then we have to define the two physical quantities that is stress and strain stress is the force per unit area and this unit is newton per meter square and strain is the change in dimension by original dimension connecting these two hooke's law states that stress by strain is a constant that constant is called modulus of elasticity or coefficient of elasticity since it there are three strains also there are three coefficient of elasticity one is the young's modulus it deals with the stress and the longitudinal strain thomas young is the discover uh, is the discoverer so it is called young's modulus then comes the bulk modulus it is it is the volume stress by volume strain and the compressibility is the reciprocal of bulk modulus and the shear the last one shear modulus or rigidity modulus it is the shear stress by shear strain okay today we are going to discuss about the bending of beams in earlier sections we have studied what is elasticity and the modulus of elasticities today we are going to discuss in detail about what is beams and its mechanism in bending of beams okay consider the first picture we can see that a lot of wood that is in a shape of rectangular cross section is passing through the roof also in the second picture we are having a several wood we call it as a beam so what is a beam can you define that a beam that is consider this picture consider the picture it is a road it is a road having circular cross section and look at this picture this is a bar in rectangular cross section we call it as beam now we are going to define what is a beam a beam can be defined as a rod or a bar of uniform circular cross section uniform circular cross section or rectangular cross section rectangular cross section whose length whose length is very large whose length is very large compared to the compared to its thickness compared to its thickness it is called a beam it can be a road or it is in circular cross section or it can be in a rectangular cross section so this uh, that is a p now for the simplicity we are taking a bar as our b okay 
consider a beam which is in rectangular cross section which is in rectangular cross section it is made up of consider it is made up of several layers it is made up of several layers one layer can be represented as this and below that it is another layer another layer likewise the whole beam is constructed using several layers now we are going to define a new term called neutral surface neutral surface or neutral layer before going to that consider a beam we consider a beam which is attached to the wall it is attached to the wall or clamped at one end and it is loaded at another end we are loading and it is having a weight mg it is the loaded end and it is the clamped end it is the clamped end which is the loaded end and after applying a load we can uh, say that the beam bends according to the mass given on the loaded end that is on applying the load it will develop a reaction which is equal and opposite in nature the load and the reaction will constitute an external couple an external couple in the body this is the load this is the load and this is the reaction the load and the reaction will create an external couple on the beam because of that the beam bend the bending of beam is due to the external couple produced by the load and its reaction now we are going to discuss about what is a neutral surface before applying the load we can say that this is a part of beam it is can be represented as ab cd and a middle layer ef it is before loading it is before loading and after loading or after it is uh, it is having external couple it will be like this it will bend okay and we can say that a dash b dash c dash and d dash and there is the layer in between these two uh, layers it can be represented as e dash f dash we can say that the layer or the topmost the uppermost section a dash b dash is is the elongated layer is the elongated layer and the lowermost layer that is c dash d dash is the compressed layer compressed layer that is we can say that it is elongated and it is compressed it is elongated and it is compressed and also we can say that the layer e dash f dash this we called no compression or elongation no compression or elongation that layer is called neutral layer or neutral surface neutral layer or neutral surface okay that is e f is equal to e dash f dash is the that is it is having same length this is the neutral 
layer. Next, we are going to study the bending moment. Bending moment. Okay. Consider a beam. It is horizontally placed in above two knife edges. Okay, this is the knife edges. This is the beam and we are loading a mass M. That is, this is the uniform bending. It is a uniform bending because the masses are loaded at both ends. We are having masses at, at both ends. So, it is called uniform bending. Or after applying, uh, we can say that there is a reaction in the knife edges which is equal and opposite. And it is also having a reaction here which is equal and opposite. The, the two forces, these two forces, these two forces contribute an external, an external couple thereby bends. That is, now the beam is like this. After applying mass, it will be like this. This is called bending of beams. This is the bending of beams. And on bending, there will be created the internal forces. There will be created some internal forces that is the internal forces uh, is due to bending internal is due to bending since it is the external couple since the, we have an internal couple that is an internal force is developed due to bending this internal force this internal force goes to the restoring couple. Restoring couple that is at equilibrium. At equilibrium, the restoring couple, the restoring couple will be equal to the external couple the external couple. These are the external couples and these are the internal couples. At equilibrium, restoring couple will be equal to the external couple. Then we can say that the moment, the moment of internal couple, the moment of internal couple is called bending moment. Bending moment. The moment of internal couple developed inside the beam is called bending moment. Now we are going to der de derive the expression for to derive the expression for bending moment. The expression for bending moment. For that, consider a section of beam that is, it is given with the letters A, B, C, D. The middle layer, the neutral layer is called E, F and an another layer. Consider an another layer that is X distance from the neutral layer. Uh, we can name it as GH, the layer GH. It is the uh, beam before bending. Before bending, the beam would uh, look like this. And after bending, the beam will look like this. It is elongated in the upper part and it will be given as A dash, B dash. And it is compressed in the lower part that is this C dash, D dash and 
there is the neutral layer which doesn't doesn't having any uh, elongation or friction we call it as e dash f dash and the layer we are considering the x distance above the neutral surface is called g dash h dash okay it is the after bending it is figure after bending consider the after bending the figure is a part of a large circle having a radius smaller from the neutral surface since e dash f dash is having a uniform length that is we, uh, we also know that e f the neutral surface e f is equal to e dash f dash since it is neutral this is the neutral surface against equal uh, equalize e f is equal to e dash f dash is the neutral surface okay from the figure we can say that angle is equal to arc by radius we know that angle is equal to arc by radius and here we are going to discuss about the arcs so arc is equal to angle into radius angle into radius consider the layer e dash f dash which is equal to e f which is equal to since it is it is at a distance r from the surface so we can say that it is the angle theta then we can say that the arc length e dash f dash is equal to r theta equation number one okay for the layer g dash h dash we can say that for it is uh, g dash h dash we can say that it is r plus x distance from the center and the theta okay this is the equation number two now we are going to find the extension before and after bending the extension of the layer extension of the layer gh due to bending that is after bending it will be g dash h dash before bending it is gh also we know that e dash f dash is equal to e h which is equal to g h before before and after bending this will be same so we can write it as g dash h dash minus e dash f dash okay which is equal to r plus x theta minus r theta which is equal to r theta plus x theta minus r theta cancelling this we get x theta equation number three this is the extension or this is the extension or we can say that this is the change in length change in length now we are going to write the strain caused by the load that is that is strain you know that strain is equal to change in length change in length divided by original length that is equal to we have the change in length x theta and the original that is before uh, bending it is r theta that is equation for four here we can cancel this it is x by r then we can say that what is young's modulus young's modulus y is equal to stress by strain that is stress is equal to Young's modulus into strain. That is Young's modulus into strain. That is strain 
x by r. This is a string. Then also we know that stress is equal to force by area. Stress is equal to force by area. Therefore, force is equal to stress into area. That is equation x by r to area. Let, uh, let it be a. Okay. Then we are going to discuss uh, the moment. We are calculating the moment of the force. Moment of the force about force into perpendicular distance. That is, what is force? X uh, y x by r into a. What is the perpendicular distance? X is the uh, perpendicular distance of the neutral axis. Okay. Say that y a x square by r. y a x square by r is the, it is for one layer. It is the moment of force for one layer. So we have to find the total moment, the total moment over whole area whole area of cross section whole area of cross section that is it is given a summation over that is y a x square by r since y and r are constant the summation is only goes to a x square the term sigma a x square it is similar to the moment of inertia is similar to moment of inertia we call here it is called as geometrical it's called as geometrical moment of inertia uh, so it can be uh, it is written as i is equal to sigma a x square okay. so the bending moment bending moment can be represented as capital B is equal to y i by r. Consider the case one. It is a rectangular that is beam is a the rectangular cross section. Rectangular cross section. We have the equation for i is equal to b d cube by 12 and if if the beam is in circular cross section, beam is circular cross section, and it is can be given uh, as pi r raised to 4 by 4, where b is the breadth, where b is the breadth, d is the depth, and here r is the radius. And uh, this two cases b is equal to y b d cube by 12 4 bar and b is equal to uh, also b, uh, pi r raised to 4 by 4 r. This is the equation for circular cross-section. Okay, this is the, and this is the equation for bending. Okay, uh, we can summarize our today's classes once again. That is, uh, today we discussed about the beams and its bending and uh, we can say, and we can say that, we can say that, we may say, Rod or bar of uniform circular cross section or rectangular cross section whose length is very large compared to the with its thickness. Okay, then uh, uh, then we discussed that the beam is made up of several layers and the middle layer called the neutral layer or neutral surface. It never bends uh, or it has no elongation or 
compression it is called a neutral layer and then we uh, then we see that uh, the bending moment the bending moment is the moment of internal couple the moment of internal couple is called the bending moment and we have derived the expression for bending moment okay this is the expression for bending moment for circular cross section it is pi r is to 4 by 4 and for the rectangular cross section it is bd cube by 12 okay 